In this video, I'm gonna take you through the plugins, the EQ, and the effects button on GarageBand iOS. Hey guys, it's JP from John Paul Music UK. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn all about music tech and looping, start now by hitting the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll never miss a single episode. So in GarageBand, there's quite a few things we can add on to a single track where we can use plugins and we can also use effects. And I'm gonna take you through that today. This is just one of the tracks I've been composing and playing around with. I'm gonna show you the track and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into the different ways we can add effects. This track is just using Apple Loops, and I just wanted to show you a little bit of it. We're gonna be concentrating on the high energy lead. So I'll stop that there. Now, first of all, if I double tap on the high energy lead, it's got its own noises anyway. Uh, so it's got a little bit of chorus noise from the actual Alchemy synth. So we can hear that there. And if I just tap on it. So we can hear a little bit of delay and that's coming from the synthesizer itself. But what I want to show you is when we go back to the track, there are a couple of ways we can actually add a little bit more flavor to this little synth lead. So what I'm gonna do is, if I just tap on the top here, there's two buttons, and one looks like little faders, and the other one says FX. So when you hit the faders, this is affecting that track. FX affects the whole song. Let's go into this. So this is the track settings. So first of all, we can see the output. We've got track volume and track pan. So I could pan this left and right. And you've also got the muting and the soloing, just like you have on the main window. The one we want to concentrate on today is plugins and EQ, but I'll get to that in one second. Just underneath, we've got master effects, and we've always got an echo and a reverb there. And we can change what that is depending on what you like and what your sound is going to be like. But once they're set in stone, you can just dial them up and add them in. So if I solo this for a second. And you can hear the difference there. But what we're gonna look at today is we're gonna have a look at the plugins and the EQ. Now, first of all, you've got a compressor and also you've got treble and bass just sitting there on the main page of that. But then when we click on plugins and EQ, you'll see a couple of extra things. First of all, you've got a compressor and a visual EQ. We can play around with the compressor a little bit. Maybe you wanna play around with the attack or the gain or also the threshold. And we can also turn that on or turn that off. And the other thing we've got underneath that is a visual EQ. I like the way this is built because as you tap on it, it brings it out into the main window and we can actually start playing with this. It's a three band EQ and it's enough to kind of get a little bit of a mix out there. Bottom left hand corner, there is an analyzer so as we play it, we can hear everything. We can see the frequencies. Now that looks like that's all there is to it, but it isn't. If we tap on edit, there are four more spaces for us to add stuff. So if I click on the first one, you'll see two options. We've got effects and we've got audio unit extensions. So effects are the garage band effects. So we've got a couple of effects there. Let's go for a bit of distortion. Let's pull this back. So 
we can add that in. If we don't want that, we can just edit that. We can just click that little minus and delete it. And then we've got a couple of other things as well. So you've got flange, you've got overdrive, you've got track echo, you've got track reverb. But the main one I want to look at today is audio unit extensions. When you click on here, we've got the extensions that come from Apple. And there's some quite nice ones here as well. And then you've also got ones that are available from any other audio unit extension from any other app. So you can see there I've got AU voice rack effects, and that's from the TC Helicon app. So if I tap on that, what it'll do is it'll bring that up for me and it'll bring it directly into GarageBand. So this is the same app that you would use if you launched it normally. And I can go in here and I can pick, like, let's have a look. We've got a high double there. And then let's just wind this back a little bit and hear it. There's a distortion there. Got another hall. Got thick chorus. Now, if I don't like that, I can just go to edit and I can just minus that out. If I just go back again, go back to audio unit extensions, we've got some nice ones there, say from directly from Apple. So if I went to the dynamic processor, uh, we've got that dynamic processor there and I can start playing with this. So you can see that it's a really nice system and I think they've pulled some of this from Logic, but what you can do is you can go and onto one of the presets there or you can of course change it yourself. Now, the other thing I can do, as I said before, I've got three more spaces here. Now, you can also see on the right, there's three little lines, so I can actually reorder these in depending on how I want that to come through. So I want the processor to come through first. I've got a processor there, and I've also got a compressor there. So let's just go for something a little bit different. So we can go for a reverb. And let's add in one of these reverbs. So we've got a nice big cathedral here. Let's wind this back and see what it sounds like. You can hear that fading away, that's really nice. So this is a really, really clever system because what you can do is this is just on one track and we can do this with all tracks. Now, if you want more effects, it says find more on the App Store. And this is where other apps come in with audio unit extensions. So this is great and it keeps it expanding and you'll be able to add more audio unit extensions the more apps you get. The other section I wanted to show you is effects. Now, effects, when you tap on it, what it does, it brings up a panel at the bottom. Now, you can bring this up in live loops mode, you can bring it up in tracks mode. And what it does is it actually affects the whole track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unsolo the high energy lead, bring the whole track back, and I'll show you the difference. So what you've got access to is six different effects either side and you can choose which ones they are if of course you choose one it'll make the other one go to a different one uh, so it sets itself up with repeater as the first one and filter as the other and in the middle we've got some nice little effects here we've got one that's a little bit of a bit distorter and the other one that makes a little bit of gaps in between your tracks and it all works on your finger gestures and you've got some stuff in the middle there for reverse you've got scratching and you've got stop so let me play this track again but this time i'm going to play around with the effects The other thing you'll notice with the two pads either side is you've got two controls. One is a padlock and the other one looks like it's got a little arrow going around. So the padlock, what you can do is you can lock where it is. It's like having a sustain on an effect. So if I hit the padlock, what it will do is it will lock my finger in that place. I can take my finger away. And what I can do is I can either unlock it or if I do it with both, 
what I can then do is there's a reset right in the middle. If I hit reset, it will unlock them. The other control is actually using the accelerometer inside the iPad. And then what I can do is if I tap on that, you can see I'm on orbit there. If I physically move the iPad, that starts moving around. So that's the effects, the audio unit extensions and FX in GarageBand iOS. If you've got any questions regarding effects or audio unit extensions with GarageBand, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can. Thank you very much for subscribing for those who already have. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel and please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. This video is in a series of videos all about GarageBand iOS, and I'm going to put a link to the series in this box right here. Please also have a look at the Patreon page. There's some nice tiers on there as well, and it just helps me a little bit more if you want to support the channel a little bit further. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.